What's up guys, this is Albie from Blocklight, and today I'll be taking you through how to start up your own Etsy store. This is part two of our video series, how to start an e-commerce business, so let's get to it. What's up guys, my name is Albie here from Blocklight. Uh, today I'm gonna take you through a video of how to create a shop on Etsy. Now, you've probably heard of Etsy before, especially if you're looking at this video right now, but Etsy is a phenomenal way to either start selling things that you've had just laying around the house for a while, uh, maybe you want to establish a side income and really put a little bit more time into it, or maybe you want to devote all your time and dive into the world of e-commerce in order to really start supplementing your income from your other job, or maybe you're currently unemployed. Either way, Etsy is a great marketplace because of how easy it is to use and how many people are already using it. Etsy's established, you'll have people selling everything from world wall maps to Harry Styles suits posters to pattern instructions on how to create things. It's just a phenomenal marketplace to really get your skills and products out there. So today we're gonna go up to the sign in button and you're gonna go to register. And you're gonna enter in your email address, your first name and your password. In my particular case, I've already created an account. So I'm just going to be signing in to my rough toys shop at gmail my password already in there and i'll be signing in so once you've signed in it takes you back to the etsy website with your profile but it still gives you a bunch of things to buy from and a bunch of products to look at now we want to actually start selling on etsy so you're going to hit this button toward the top right here sell on etsy now once you get to go and sell it on Etsy, they'll give you their little introduction, their descriptions of everything, and it's worthwhile to read through in terms of uh, some of the details, but I'll also be taking you through them later in this video. So we're gonna scroll all the way down. We are gonna start selling today. We're gonna open our Etsy shop. Right away, it'll take you to shop preferences. These are very basic, um, things like language, country, currency. It's already in English in the United States for me, which is great. Then I'll take you which of these best describes you. This is another one, like they say, it does not affect the actual opening of the shop, but it's just something they record in order to uh, try to see what users are on their website. So I'm gonna say part-time, that's how I like it. I've got other stuff going on, but I wanna get a little bit of a side income. So next up, you're gonna have to name the shop. So in this case, I've already looked up a few. You can see my rough toys here, but we're gonna go with rough toys shop. Now, when you're naming an Etsy shop, Oh, it's available too. When you're naming an Etsy shop, you're not allowed to use any spaces or dashes or anything like that. It has to all be together with alphanumeric stuff. If I try to say, for example, put a space here, it'll say your shop name. They only include unaccented Roman letters and numbers without spaces. So in our case, we're going to go with rough, oops, rough toys shop. And like we said, we already checked the availability and it's available. So we'll move on to the next one. But the name is very important for me, uh, the setup of the shop, because it's how you're going to attract a lot of your customers. You have to think that your presence online might not be restricted to just Etsy as well. Perhaps when you end up creating an Instagram account to further promote your shop and uh, get after the marketing a little bit further, you're going to want a name that really pops, something that really gets the attention of your customer. You also want to make it clear that you are a shop. A lot of times people will go with uh, Albie's Creations or Albie's Crafts. Those are very good, but at this point in time, so many people have done that, that it might become a bit mundane as well. So uh, a rough toy shop in this case is a clever one that we're using because we're going to be selling durable dog toys really helps out, tells your customer exactly what you're selling. And, you know, it's a little bit uh, a little bit clever as well, a little bit of a pun thrown in there with the ref instead of R-O-U-G-H. So then we're gonna save and continue, move on to the next stop. Right away, Etsy is no nonsense. I mean, they just pop you right into it and already get to stocking your shop up. They give you 10 options for the listings here at the beginning, and you, you're perfectly fine to list 10 things if you want to, but the minimum is only one. So once you hit add a listing, Etsy gets right into it and starts taking you through your first listing. So since we'll be selling dog toys, I'm just going to use a stock image that we have of our company that we've created in order to uh, get through this and get through all the required fields, but I'll also just take you through what they offer you. So you can first off add any photos that you'd like. In this case, I'll add a photo from my 
account here, and let's just say I'll add Rough Toys. Now this is actually an emblem for our uh, company, but I'm gonna add it in there just for now to our products. When you're adding a photo though, you wanna have at least one good one, but honestly there's no such thing as too many. Your customer is not gonna get tired of scrolling through. If they don't wanna scroll through, they won't scroll through all the photos. We've got some tips on the left here as well for photos of your product, like using natural light and no flash. But these are pretty uh, simple tips in order to really help your customer get a sense of the more or less dimensions of your product, which you'll also be listing later. So they also give you the option to add a video. Now this is a new thing for them, that's why it's still in beta. But adding a video can be a very helpful thing if you have a product that say moves or displays a physical action. This could be a lava lamp, a light show projector, what have you really. But you only wanna add a video if it's something that's actually a physical motion because they're still in beta and it's not exactly the best thing yet. I checked it out earlier. They give you some tips on how to learn to make videos that sell, which are uh, pretty helpful. And they're actually also offering a little bit of a promotion here. 50% of Etsy buyers will see your videos because they are really trying to get this video feature up and running. I am not going to add a video because we are just selling dog toys. So next we'll go through the listing details and these are really key. You've got a lot of things to fill out here and I'll take you through each of them. So the title will say Rough Toys Durable Dog Toy. Um, about this listing, let's say I did it's a finished product and I made it very recently. These aren't quite as important as the title itself because this is what people will actually be searching in order to find your dog toy, in this case, or your product. I put Rough Toys Durable Dog Toy here because it includes the keywords that I'd want my customers to be looking for. Durable, dog toy, I might add something else in that's maybe a little bit more playful too, maybe something that will actually grab the attention and it pop up during customer searches. Um, this item is handmade, yeah, I guess, when we had made them in our shop, we'll say. And then category, category is a very big one because this is where you'll actually get your product found when people aren't just searching for it. So if I type in dog toys, we've got a couple options here. We've got dog toys in the section dog toys, a couple different options, but I'm gonna go with right in here, dog toys. And it'll show you exactly what categories that your shoppers will find your product under. So these are the exact places that I want people who are looking for my type of product to find it. Um, primary color really depends on what you're selling um, for the color listings. I'm gonna say this is our black version. There's no secondary color. These are all optional, but they do help out in terms of uh, differentiating between your own products. Occasion, um, there's no occasion for mine, but if you happen to have something that was for a particular party or occasion, it would be great to add that in there. It's just another way to get found. Holiday, we're not related to any sort of holiday, but if maybe it was a Christmas dog toy, Christmas themed dog toy, then we'd put it in there, but we don't have any of that right now. Renewal options. So this is where we start to get into the actual financials a little bit of Etsy as well. So in order to put a listing up, you have to pay uh, 20 cents per new listing. In this case, you can set it for automatic that that 20 cent um, listing will just be renewed after four months or if it sells out right here. Or you can say, I wanna do things on my own and I'm gonna go manual. If my thing sells out, that's great, it's sold out, I'll start a new listing myself. We're just gonna go with uh, manual for now. Uh, but I would actually really suggest automatic. It's only 20 cents for a listing. It's really in the grand scheme of things, not very much. Type, physical, mine's a dog toy, but if you were selling something digital like files, you'd check this one off and then put those through. And then I'm gonna put a description. So uh, for my description, I'll put uh, with our super durable signature toy, you don't have to sacrifice aesthetics. Basically, you're gonna put a general description in here um, of your toy so that you can really get the customer's attention. One big thing is, and they state it over here as well, is that you wanna start very well on the first few lines because when you do a preview, which you can show, it only shows the beginning of the actual uh, description. It doesn't show the entire thing just in case it's a little bit too long. Um, so I'm gonna finish it off, or your dog's, uh, let's say boisterous <laughs> personality. Those of you with active dogs, can really relate to that one. I'm gonna put a short description here, but you can really take your shopper through exactly how you made it, what it's made with, the materials, everything like that, in order to give it 
a more um, complete description, let's say. So here's the description. Uh, here's the preview. Here, if somebody found it right online. That's what they'd see. Rough Toys Durable Dog Toy by Rough Toys Shop. And that's exactly what I want them to see. I want them to say, "Oh, what do you know? There's a company that actually makes durable dog toys that you don't have to sacrifice the look of. That's incredible." Uh, we don't have any production partners, so we're not going to fill anything out there. But we can head on over to Sections here. Now, Sections is a great one for diversifying your and organizing your um, shop when you have a bunch of different things that you're selling. In this case, I'm going to start a section called Dog Toys. In case we ever branch out to things other than dog toys, I'd be able to create another section. And then within my shop, you'd be able to look at dog toys in one section. You'd be able to look at, say, leashes in another section. Then you're gonna move over to tags. Now tags are very important because this is just another way for your comp I mean your product to be found. In this case, spot uh geez. In this case, Etsy really doesn't put too much emphasis on the tags when you're setting up the shop, but it's just another way for people for customers to find your product. So I would highly suggest filling out some tags here. I'm just gonna put dog toys, um, pets dogs just a few things but you can add a few things but you can add up to 13 of them i'll put those in materials um we don't have a particular material for these dog toys yet but if they were made with a special material that the customer might recognize you would want to put it in there next up you'll come up to inventory and pricing um these are pretty straightforward you just want to be as uh, straight up with your prices and quantities as you can be as well as with yourself so say we're selling these for mm, 20 dollars each and I'll say we got 10 of them ready to go. In this case, for the quantity, you wanna put as many as you usually have ready to sell within the next few days. People like being very quick on Etsy with their turnover. So if you have things that aren't going to be able to actually get out to your customer for another week or two, uh, maybe you only wanna put how many you actually have in stock at that time. But for now, I'm actually just gonna put one because we're only doing one listing. SKUs are pretty cool as well. Um, buyers don't see them, but if you want to learn more about them, there's a link right here. It just helps you keep track of your stock. If we have variations, we can add variations with different colors, different materials, anything like that. But we're going to stick with just one for now, no variations. And then say, for example, if you had a personalized item, maybe it's a necklace that you want to, oh yeah, maybe it's a necklace that you want somebody to write on and they want to be able to put their name on it. Or if you really wanted to, in this case, you could put your dog's name on the dog bone or a little message to show that it's that dog's bone. Um, but it's max 12 characters, no spaces, no special characters. If you give it an example here, um, you can really just write whatever you want your customer to see. Personalization is optimal. The actual character limit isn't 12. It's really whatever you set it to be, depending on your product. Um, and you can give your buyer that much information, but I'm going to turn that off. We're not going to personalize our dog bones for now. Then it goes over to shipping. So I'm gonna have them calculate the shipping prices for me. It's just a bunch of basics here, really. Filling out your zip code, um, processing time, say usually like to ship things out the next business day. You ship to United States and worldwide. You have a bunch of different shipping services that you can go through here. You'd hit edit. Um, you'd run through USPS, 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 a bunch of different types, types of USPS shipping here or just standard international. You can go to some advanced ones as well if you have uh, a different situation, but in this case, I'm gonna give my buyers all these options. When they go to checkout, they're gonna have the chance to choose between what sort of shipping method they want, and it varies by price. That's uh, where the choice comes in. Or if you really wanna give your customers um, an extra little incentive to buy, you can offer free shipping. Like I'd say free domestic shipping within the US or free international shipping. Um, that's just a little extra incentive, like I said, for your buyer to choose your product over others can be very helpful when you're trying to differentiate yourself from other um, producers within that particular market. And then maybe you have a handling fee. Maybe it's really hard to get your product uh, moving along. So you, you know, you put in a handling fee of maybe $5 or something like that. We don't have, a, we don't have a handling fee. We already have our dog bones and we're ready to ship them out. So I'd save that as my shipping profile. I'd say rough toys, create the profile. And then we move on to item weight and size. Same thing, just being very straight up with this. I'm going to say they're five pounds. Uh, they're about a foot long each and maybe 1.5 inches in width and height. You know, a standard, standard dog bone dimensions, I would say. And it'll even give you uh, the shipping, the general shipping price, depending on where you're going. In this case, if I wanted to take it from where I am to uh, Chicago, for example, there's 
about a 1064 USPS priority mail shipping price on that one. So the total price of the product would be 3064 after shipping. Um, Etsy has their own shipping labels, which is pretty cool because it would be uh, 14, 1440 for a full shipping label. In this case, if you just print your own out, click the link, follow it, print out your own Etsy shipping labels, you can get it for 376 cheaper. So just another way to save a little bit of money, but we are just going to continue on. Next up, they'll take you back to the stock your shop. We're just going to stick with that one first toy to begin with and move along so the you can fill as in, in as i said up to 10 but we're just going to keep moving so these next two sections have to do with the actual financials of etsy uh starts off here with the how you'll get paid section which is always very important after all we are looking to get some money from selling things on etsy so some important things about how you get paid really not too much but other than just giving your bank info and your personal information i am not going to show you mine because i do not want you to hack into my bank account um, additionally you will be taxed uh, for your sales on etsy so it's very important that you get all of that information in there the next section is the billing so it's important to mention a few things about the billing on etsy i mentioned earlier that it is 20 cents per new listing or renewal and that's for every four months or until you sell out like i said very small nominal fee given the grand scheme of how you'll be selling things but it's worth mentioning that there's also a 5% transaction fee on every sale that you have, as well as a 3% plus 25 cents payment processing fee. Now, you'll see all this information when you're filling out all of this, all of these boxes. But even though Etsy is charging these extra fees for the sales and the transactions, I still think Etsy is one of the best selling platforms out there just because of a lot of the reasons that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. It's a marketplace where a lot of people already exist. It's very established. And as a result, it's a very easy way for you to start selling your stuff as well. That's not to say that you can't diversify and have perhaps a Shopify powered website or be on Poshmark. You can really diversify as much as you want to. But Etsy is a great place to start just because of how simple it is. So we will save and continue with all that. But once you're through with all of that, it'll take you to your actual shop page. Now, mine looks pretty bland here. I don't have any images. All I've got is one product and it's actually just the logo. So you're gonna wanna go into edit shop. Once you get into edit shop, you ha are all of a sudden have a ton of different tools to use in order to make your products more attractive to your buyers. So. One good way to start off with that is of course by putting a shop icon here. I'll choose a file because we actually do have one. I'll put the, this is our shop icon. And let's see, yeah, it looks pretty good. So we'll save that and looks good to me. So a uh, rough toy shop, maybe I wanna choose something bigger, but I'm not gonna edit it here. You have a bunch of different things you can edit here. So first off, you've got your actual shop stuff. A shop title would be very helpful as well in terms of getting your um, customers to actually see what your shop is about. So we're going to say uh, durable dog toys that do not, that don't compromise looks. Yeah, that looks good to me. Durable dog toys that do, don't compromise looks. A good little quick description. Um, you can get pretty you can get pretty descriptive here if you really want. Um, they showed you that preview and how it would show up if you, somebody were to find you online. So it's very helpful. No location set right now. I put in my location. It's very helpful to put it in your location and your contact information over here as well as the picture in order to make yourself appear more personable. Make it easier for people to reach out to you. Make them feel more comfortable with the entire experience. So this is how many people have favorited your shop. You've got your um, you've got your photos in for everything and you've got a featured area here if you want to highlight any sort of listings but other than that it would be sorted by categories within here back to the categories that I was talking about earlier and then on the left here you have a bunch of different tools in order to analyze your shop these are all a bit more advanced and we'll be getting into them in future videos but um, the biggest one really is the stats so Etsy doesn't really give you very many stats to go for here um, just, you know, some very basic ones. That's where Blocklight Analytics Platform comes in. The way the Blocklight Analytics Platform works is that it gives your company deeper insights on how it can grow and become a more successful, profitable company. 
Uh, the analytics platform allows business owners to connect the tools they use to run their business and grow. It helps shop owners easily grow their business with deep analytics using data from all the tools they would need for their business. And lastly, it empowers shop owners to grow with automated insights right from their business timeline. We would love for you to check out our website. There's plenty of more information on it that would be very relevant to your business and getting started with e-commerce. And we hope that you'll give us a solid look. With that, this has been the second video in a series of videos trying to help you grow your e-commerce business. Feel free to check out the related videos for more information, like, comment, and subscribe. And we wish you nothing but the best of luck for your company.